I want to take a look at this little Samsung flat panel TV. My cousin dropped it off earlier and said it does absolutely nothing when you plug it in. No standby light or any sign of life whatsoever. And sounds to me like the power supply is completely dead. Let's see, what is this? A model LN19A450C1D. Made in September 2008. And it's definitely not an LED backlight. It's just a conventional fluorescent backlight. But anyway, let's uh, see what it takes to get this back panel removed. Well, this has a very simple removal for the back panel compared to a lot of other TVs I've worked on. you got four screws holding the stand in. Once you take those out, it kind of slides out of its groove in the bottom here. And that's what it looks like. And just two screws in the corners of the back panel. It picks up from the bottom and then the top edge is snapped in place and then just gotta pop that out and what do we have here looks like the fuse is blown so let's see what the problem is I've removed the power supply since I confirmed that it wasn't putting out any voltage and there was no sense in having the rest of the TV up here until I fix this and I found that there's a dead short across ZD 102 this little Zener diode here. And I'm really suspecting that IC101, the chip on this heatsink, is the actual problem because this is the main switching IC that handles all the current for this TV. It drives this transformer and then that generates the 14.5 volts through this rectifier here and these filter caps to run the rest of the TV. So if this thing got hit by a surge or just plain old wear worn out from use this chip here is probably going to be one of the first things to, to go. Well, it turns out both IC101 and ZD102 were shorted. In fact, pins 2, 3, and 4 are all shorted together on this IC. So now I've got to try to read those tiny part numbers on there and hopefully track down some replacements. Uh, I don't know if Mauser Electronics is going to carry something like this or if I'm going to have to look elsewhere because. I'm not really familiar with these chips. It's made by Fairchild, I can tell that much. But I'm going to have to get my magnifying glass and see what's written on here. Well, I got the approval to do the repair and found the parts I needed at DigiKey Electronics. I haven't ordered from them in a long time because I usually use Mauser, mainly because the website is a little easier for me to deal with and they tend to have a little bit lower prices on certain capacitors that I use, but DigiKey has a lot of stuff that Mauser doesn't have, and these Fairchild uh, switching ICs was, were one example. But this is a FSDM07652R. It's a nice long part number on that one. And the Zener diode was a 47 volt 1.3 watt, a 1N4756A. So hopefully that's going to get this thing up and running again. As long as this transformer is not shorted or anything stupid like that. I really hope it isn't. So far so good. I've got those parts installed and I also ended up replacing this 47 microfarad 50 volt capacitor that was right here. I used the Nichicon PW series. I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't one of the reasons the chip had gone bad even though the cap tested okay. But I powered it up through the current limiting light bulb just for safety's sake and got 14.7 volts DC at the output. So I think we're good to put this back in the TV. Captain, we are cleared for takeoff. It's alive! Alright, I put the back cover back on this thing and install the stand so I can actually sit this thing up and test it. Looks promising so far. After fumbling with the buttons on the side of the TV for the longest time trying to navigate the menu without the remote, I'm doing the auto channel setup because it wasn't configured for whatever reason. Maybe they weren't using it for a TV or had it set up for over the air, I'm not sure, but so far it looks like this thing's got a pretty good black level. There's there's not there's hardly any backlight bleed on this TV. Well, it's working great so far. I've got it hooked up to my cable, and I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a HD channel, actually. 
Uh, I don't know for sure because I don't normally watch TV. I don't even have a TV hooked up down here because I mainly just have cable for the high-speed internet and nothing more. But it looks good on here nonetheless. I'm just going to let this run for a while and make sure it's stable and I'll call this done.